Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain and today I'm going to be talking about and reviewing Business Wizards, which is a small little zine-sized role-playing game from 9th level games using their polymorph game system. So if you have not uh, seen any of my other reviews of 9th level games as role-playing games, their polymorph system is a very rules-light system. Uh, where each player chooses a role as their class, uh, and that allows you to uh, know exactly what die you are going to roll for all tasks. So the the possible roles you can have uh, would assign you a d4, d6, d8, or d10, and then the tasks that you could possibly have to complete, as you can see here on the character sheet, uh, the tasks might require a 2 or 3, which would be best done by a d4, or a 3, 4, 5, or a 4, 5, 6, or 7, or a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. And as you can see, each of those are better done by certain roles, which focus in on, for instance, the d8 is focuses in on attack, which is why it's so great at liquidate, which liquidate uh, roles are things that require violence, budget cuts, firing, and setting fires. Uh, whereas the innovator, or more intelligent character, is really good at ideate, which ideate are things like wits, knowledge, perception, and bullshit. Uh, this, uh, this is really fun. Now, if you couldn't tell by the title and the things I'm talking about yet, well, again, the system is, is very similar to the basic um, uh, polymorph system that you see in most of the other games, though they do vary a bit from game to game. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the system in a minute. Um, the game itself, the setting, is very tongue-in-cheek. This is very silly. So this feels like a cross between Lord of the Rings and Office Space, which is an odd thing to say. Or you could say uh, Dungeons and & Dragons and The Office. Something like that. It's meant to be like an office comedy crossed with fantasy, which is really weird. You're a bunch of wizards in a business and you're trying to decide uh, the best way to tackle supernatural problems that are affecting your bottom line. Um, yeah, sorcery and capitalism. It's really odd. It's a really fun little parody-ish, humorous game. Obviously, mainly meant for one-offs uh, because it is comedy-based. Uh, you don't want to... You don't want it to wear out its welcome. You don't want this one to go too long uh, because if you do play it too long, the jokes are going to get old. So there is no advancement system in the, this version of the um, Polymorph. Most of the versions of the Polymorph don't actually have an advancement system, unlike Mazes, which did. Mazes did have an advancement system. This one does not. But it does have a fairly advanced system since everyone's meant to do magic and you don't want the magic to sound very similar uh, for the different classes and the different types of wizards, you want it to, to be very different. They have a bunch of different stats in here that you don't generally have in a lot of the other polymorph role-playing games, uh, like what school you went to, and also, uh, in addition to what school, what your major field of study was. And these things allow you to... Uh, specifically spell out what sort of spells you can do. Uh, they, there is even a chart in here that cross-references depending on what type of school and what your major field of study was. Tells you kind of like what sort of spells you can do. And there are other areas that spell it out in more depth than just that chart. Uh, which actually, without an advancement system, makes this one of the more advanced versions of the polymorph system. One of the more involved versions, especially... Um, being that it is for a funny comedy-based game that has things like, you know, a, a familiar that is a cross between a mimic and a Xerox machine there. Um, there are, there are tons of really amusing things in here. And again, it's meant to be silly. Now, this book is a kind of a smaller zine, but it's got a fair number of pages. We, we've got a total of 76 pages. And in here, in addition to the universe, which it gives you enough to go off of the fact that, again, this is a fantasy universe uh, with wizard corporations. Um, and the fantasy universe can be any sort of generic fantasy universe. So there's a lot of references in here to events like those in the Lord of the Rings books, um, but done in this weird universe. There's also 
in here a lot of information on the system for for magic items and magic itself and familiars etc and then there is a number of sample adventures and explanation on how to make adventures but again obviously this is meant to be uh, mo mostly for doing one-off games uh, because this is this is a hundred percent meant to be a goofy silly distraction from bigger more serious role-playing games so this is the sort of thing again you could whip together a quick game of on your regular role-playing game night when when everybody couldn't show up uh, characters for this game can be slapped together in about five minutes for each character which is pretty quick and if you had an idea to go with and everybody was on board with being silly and campy and fun you could you could slam out a game of this and a game should be probably about two hours about two hours of role playing a silly funny uh game where you defeat the enemies through dice rolls and comedy um that said i like this this is fun this is i mean you know sometimes when playing role playing games we can have a tendency to take ourselves very seriously and in certain game uh settings taking everything very seriously is appropriate but sometimes it's nice to just let loose and and be silly and and crack jokes and have every player be comic relief and there are comedy role-playing games out there but there aren't that many of them and and this is a really good one and if you're looking for a comedy role-playing game distraction from the uber serious role-playing games that you normally play this might be the product for you because this is this is that this is a distraction this is a a light fun uh humorous little game um yeah and again this is a, a tiny little game not much of a commitment it's a little you know mini zine glue binding book i was able to go through the entire book and read it in one day and i feel like i can run it right now if people want to play a game of it i could come up with an idea and just go uh, one thing that's also very interesting in here is uh, they kind of give you the option to either like a traditional role-playing game, have a set game master, or like one of the other games that I reviewed previously in uh, the Polymorph system, which was Savage Sisters, uh, you could do a communal sort of role-playing if everyone is comfortable from, for, for doing that. Now, in Savage Sisters, it was not really an option. It was an integral part of the game. Here, it's an option. They're like, if you want to... Uh, one player can be game master until you get past the first big event and then when you uh, are doing the next big event the next player takes over as being game master and their character is more of an NPC at that time. Um, I like it better the way it is presented in here than in Savage Sisters because it is presented as an option and not a default. Uh, you, they kind of intimate, uh, the designer kind of intimates that uh, they would like you to do the communal game mastering have everybody take a turn as being a game master but if you have people who are not comfortable doing that you can have a designated game master i forgot to mention earlier by the way this game is designed by nat mesnard and patrick watson i'm going to show the credits page right here so everybody can get a look at everybody involved in the creation of this amazingly fun little game um and yeah, again, this is not one. This is one uh, one of the games where I do not bemoan not having a advancement system. I have a different comedy game in my collection that I tried out, and the advancement system seems superfluous in that particular game because you don't want to keep going with with the comedy games. The jokes will get old when everyone is being comic relief. This is the uh, comedy games are the sort of things you want to do one offs with, and for a one off system uh, the combination of the of the rules light polymorph system and the comedy setting work really well to make this a great game for one-offs which is why i'm going to give business wizards a uh, 7.5 stars out of 10. i absolutely do recommend this game to you if anything i talked about sounds fun to you if you want to combine lord of the rings with office space and have a goofy, funny, magical adventure. Yeah, Business Wizards is going to be right up your alley. So if you have played Business Wizards, please comment down below. Let me know how it went with your group, if they enjoyed the comedy of it. Um, let me know. Comment down below. And if you'd like to see me do more review uh, reviews of role-playing game products like this in the future, be sure to give this video a like. 
Share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.